Hey everybody, welcome back. I think to start things off, we're just going to go out into the wilderness and we will start grinding on some stuff here as we figure out what we want to do with our time this afternoon. Lael, hello. Petru, hello. Welcome, guys. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Whitney. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Jeff, Adrian, welcome back, guys. Thanks for being here. Hope you're all doing well. Boyer, welcome. Thanks for being here. I would like to finish a Bang of Knolls if we could, and maybe work on the Battle War Axes for Blackrock Menace. We'll have to see what level the orcs are up there. Somebody warned me that they have a really high respawn rate, so... We need to keep our eyes open for that. At this point, though, I feel like we're, we're pretty used to the respawn rates. We, we kind of always just plan for it to be really high. Yeah, Whitney, I have all kinds of pictures of the puppy. I think I should probably put some more in the Discord. I think maybe I'll maybe I'll do that today. Yeah, he's adorable and he's like basically always picture worthy, so if a phone is out and he's near, then a, a picture's probably gonna get snapped of him doing something adorable. Daniel, welcome. Thanks for being here. Dan, Steve, hello guys. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Mr. Hassel, hello. Welcome to the stream, thanks for being here.
I don't really think we mess with this. It'd be really cool if we had another player around, but you know the weird thing is we haven't really seen anybody. There are people here, but just not exactly where we're at. Hmm. Or there could be some layering going on, I guess. That's also a possibility. If this guy decides to run and he goes the wrong way, we're going to be in really big trouble. Heal notwithstanding, the heal also sucked, but the running is going to be worse. Okay, good, he got caught in a cast animation instead of running away. That's perfect. Adrian, welcome, man. Don't worry about it, yeah. We're going to stream probably at least twice a day, sometimes three times a day, depending on what we have going on and how we're feeling about what we're doing gonna be back on this evening for some Diablo. I thought it was 7, but it actually looks like it's gonna be 6 p.m. my time, so I will have to adjust the schedule for the Diablo stream. It's gonna be 6 p.m. That's when they that's when they say so. But yeah, we'll be doing a few streams a day. Come to the ones you can come to, if you want to, and I appreciate it. Let's go up to the north here and we'll check out what's going on with the orcs. Ooh, we got into this canyon and the music stopped for a minute. I thought it was going to completely cut out. Oh, it's back to the same music track. Here we go. Yeah, sometimes we have orcs hiding up on the hills here. Let's go deal with the ones that are kind of far out before we think about fighting our way into the camp. If we can kill a bunch of them out here, maybe even catch some respawns, that's going to make things a lot easier and safer for us. Jonathan asked if I have any objections to leveling with a fan in hardcore. Um, as in like a duo or trio. Right now I probably wouldn't want to just because my schedule is what it is. And a lot of people don't have the time to play when I play as much as I play. I'm very lucky to have the time that I do. And so right now I don't have any plans for a hardcore run uh, with a duo or trio. It's something I'd like to do in the future. What I, would, what I would love would be to do uh, some uh, dungeons with you guys, so like, leveling side by side and hanging out and doing dungeon runs and stuff like that I think would be super awesome. That's kind of what I hope we can do in the future. You know, even though we can only do one run per character, I still think it would be super cool if we could do that. Is each mob a random respawn time or is it based on zones? It's It seems to be based on, a, and I don't know the exact answer, but what it seems to be based on is the amount of players in a zone and also how quickly the enemies are being killed. And so it, what it seems to be is it seems to be variable based on a couple of different factors. It's never really consistent. The only thing that might have some consistency with respawn timers could be named enemies. I believe named enemies are on like a five minute timer or a two minute timer depending on who they are, where they're at. But for random enemies, like the Gortusk here or the Orcs, it's it's variable. It's hard to predict. You can also get what we call hyper spawns, which is where like everything's dead and then like a whole camp will instantly respawn back into the world. So you'll have like four things spawn back in immediately. It adds another level of challenge to the hardcore challenge. We don't want to go much further that way. <laughs> as cool as it looks.
We could get the copper. That would be smart. Yeah, there are lots of situation, or situations where you'll see enemies that just got killed that simply pop back into existence, and it can happen with entire camps. Respawns are what cause most of our hardcore deaths. It usually happens because of a group of respawns that we, we didn't see, didn't anticipate. Especially respawns who can hurl fireballs. We lost a shaman to a respawn deforester in Stone Talon. They hurled fireballs. We lost the gnome warrior to uh, pillagers in Westfall that respawned and they started hurling fireballs. That's like the deadly combination, an instant respawn of a group that, that's all casters. These guys were hiding behind this tree just to catch the unwary person who's going to round it without seeing their names. How, how shifty is that? There's a druid over here. Maybe he'll take one of these guys. Maybe he'll just sneak his way out. Oh, he's going that way. Mike T, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Thank you for being here. The streams are new, and I've really been enjoying them. And so this is just what we're doing now. And we'll do this for as long as we're all digging it. Yeah, mainly watch out for fireballs. If something has a fireball, you want to be very careful about how you approach it, and you want to be very careful about your level relative to its level. The last thing you want is to be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with an at-level enemy that casts fireballs. Because it will decimate most classes. In unless you're a mage and you've gotten to the level where you have the, the fire resist spell that just stops incoming fire damage. And they'll even eat through that in a cast and a half and start digging into your actual HP. Confo95, hey man. Welcome. Thanks for being here. We're going to wait for this patrol to come on out this way. And we're going to roll our camera out a little bit. Yeah, definitely. We'll let the hunter have this one. That works for me. Ah, uh, that was not great. How did I not see this guy? He just kind of peeked up uh, over the hill and I didn't see him till the last minute. And by then it was far too late. Luckily, our hunter buddy here picked him up. Level 23 Night Elf Hunter. I really appreciate the help in this case. You know, the, the class, the racials that the races have, I, I don't ever really think about them that much when I make my character. I probably should put a lot more thought into like what races have which specials and like how that congeals with the class, but I never really have. Like for instance, I think on humans we have mace and sword specialization, which actually happens to work really well for us. So this is a good combo. The paladin human is a really good combo because we're going to be using swords and maces. So that works really well. Diplomacy, rep gains by 10%. Didn't know we had that. And we have perception. Dramatically increases stealth detection for 20 seconds. See, that's something that I could use that I, I have never used. And the human spirit increases spirit by 5%, which could be good for like basically any caster. Basically, humans have perks that just allow them to mesh well with any class. But I, I never really consider it when I make my character. Brother Jerry, I'm loving him too. Thank you for being here, man. I appreciate it. Uh, I see level 25 guys, and I'm thinking to myself, Robert, why are you back here? Let's get out of here. <laughs> Let's do that. Come back down this way. We have exactly one battle axe. 
So you can kind of get an idea of what the drop rate's going to be like for this one. JC, welcome back. Thanks for being here. Alex, my microphone is a Yeti X microphone, and it, I, I, the way I use it, it's really, really close to me, and I have the gain, the sensitivity on it, turned way down. And it's also a directional mic, so the way it's set, it's only going to pick up sound coming from in front of me. So my keyboard is, like, behind the microphone, kind of. So like, you can hear my keyboard at times, but it doesn't catch as much of the sound as, like, having a microphone that's trying to pick up sound in an entire room. So it's just a close microphone with, with directional directional audio detection. I think it's cardioid. Is that how it's pronounced, the type of microphone? Cardioid mic? I also have a habit of muting my microphone a lot because I have a habit from being in like corporate meetings and stuff where you're sitting in a meeting for a long time and you don't have to talk too much but sometimes you do have to talk and you just kind of get used to like muting your mic when you're not when you're not talking and then you reflexively unmute yourself right as you go to talk and I kind of have that I kind of have that ingrained muscle memory of just if I'm going a long time without talking I, I will go to mute. Tactical Warrior, good point. I always forget about the the, the wool and the cloth uh, turn-ins. I should do that. Point Madness, welcome back, man. Thanks for being here. Yeah, we went live at uh, around 1 o'clock. You know, I, I put it up and I post it and I schedule it. I'm just not sure how good YouTube is at actually showing you the scheduled stream unless you click to be notified or click the bell. I'm not sure like wh where it puts the uh, scheduled stream. Because it's, it's not a premiere, so it doesn't push it hard the way it would push a premiere. It's just a schedule for a stream. If you go to my channel page, you'll always see the, the upcoming streams. But I, I don't know that YouTube prompts it really anywhere else until the stream is live. Yeah, JC, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Just sitting in sitting in virtual meetings and stuff, just getting used to being on being on mute. I, I have it bound to the five key on my keyboard, so I can just I tap it really easily. And you'll see that I don't use any of those keyboard keys for my action bars or anything. Alex, what I can say to check, man, is check your gain. Check the gain, the sensitivity of the microphone. Mine is basically all the way off. And I talk with the microphone about five inches in front of my face. And it's on an arm that's attached to my desk. And it's literally right in front of me. But yeah, I have because of that, I have the gain, the sensitivity turned all the way down, essentially. It can be tricky. I remember when I first started with the Yeti, if you go back and listen to my really old videos from a few years ago, the audio sounded a lot different. I had the gain turned up, I had the mic much farther away from me, and I wasn't in a very well soundproofed area, so it was often echoey, a little bit tinny, and it was something that I just kind of kept adjusting over time, getting, to, getting it to the point where I'm at now with the settings and where I position the mic and stuff like that. Other than that, I'm not sure, like it will pick up some noise, like you, if, I, if I click vigorously on my mouse, you can probably hear that right now. But I, I have kind of a quieter mechanical keyboard. 
but I'm sure some of my clicks must get through to the audio. Tactical Warrior, is it? It's better in the in the streams than in the recorded stuff? Well, then why haven't you told me that the recorded stuff wasn't good, buddy? <laughs> no, I appreciate the feedback, man. I, I haven't listened to any of the live stream stuff. Usually, I'll go through and I'll do like a listen every other day to the, to the recordings and make sure that they sound okay, but I haven't listened to any of the live stuff yet. Being in OBS gives me a, a little bit more granular control over how loud I am and how loud the game is, which is much easier to dial in the settings than having to rely on the shadow play settings and just adjusting my in-game volume. It was always difficult to, to get it where I really wanted it. So things are just much um, much quieter in the in the recordings. Yeah, that makes sense. And I and I have the Nvidia Boost for my microphone. I have it boosted up, and it does still seem to be too quiet. I would use OBS for the recordings, but OBS acts up for me a lot of times. When I when I try to do recordings in OBS, it hangs when it tries to finalize the file if it's more than like a forty five minute video and I'm using the record option, it goes to, to wrap up the video and then sometimes it just doesn't. Which leaves you with an hour's recording that is now a useless file. And I, I learned that during the Maladeth fresh start on the Paladin. I had several episodes that just didn't finalize properly from OBS while using it to record. And that was kind of the nail in the coffin for using o OBS to, to record. And the reason I was using OBS, I was trying to use the Shure SM7B microphone that most streamers use, but the way the audio works with uh, using NVIDIA Shadowplay, it only captured the mono audio, which was only one side, like one ear, you got the left ear sound. And uh, if I wanted to get it to go through both ears, I had, long story short, I had to use OBS to do it. And OBS was not reliable for me when it came to recordings. So I had to go back to using NVIDIA Shadowplay for recordings, which, like I said, just doesn't give me the control over the audio stuff that I would like to have. really think we can take two of these guys unfortunately maybe someone will come up, come around and we'll be able to take them out but I don't think I take these guys on my own doesn't the paladin get a CC that CC's humanoids or is that like a thing we have to spec into ah uh, yes we, we have to spec into it puts the enemy target in a state of meditation that is a very strange endpoint talent for retribution. That is kind of, it's a nice ability, but that would be kind of a bummer to have that be like your last talent point spent is for a crowd control. I guess, I mean, in classic, that's pretty powerful. It's, it's unfortunate that we, we, we'd have to wait uh, to get it. Point Madness, you ask if I just make WoW content full-time now, in what way do you mean? Do you mean like in life is that all I do with myself? 
Or do you mean like, when it comes to video games, is WoW the only game that I'm gonna play? Which one do you mean, brother? It's a different question. Alexander, hello. Thanks for being here. I mean, if it helps, Point Man, is I, I'm playing Diablo 7 ten, or Diablo 7. I will be playing Diablo 7 when I'm 72 years old. I'm playing Diablo 4 tonight, so I'm, I'm not just playing WoW. If that was the question, am I just playing WoW right now on this stream? Yes. It, is all I do in my life to play World of Warcraft? No. I hope that answered any possible variant of the question for you. Fanfear, hello. Thanks for being here. You meant for a job? Am I a full-time WoW content creator? Um, I don't consider it a job. I don't have I don't have a full-time job working for a corporation or other entity, if that's what you're asking me. I'm extremely lucky that I get to do what I do and live my life the way that I do. And part of that is that I have an amazing wife who has a great job and she loves it. And so for the past few years, I've been able to build this and work on this. Uh, while doing many other things with my actual life. But those other things that I do with my actual life, those things are not working for somebody else, no. I don't currently have anybody else besides Google that writes me a paycheck. If that's the question. But I don't consider it a job. Do I consider it work? Yeah, it's meaningful work that I love. But there's a difference between saying you have a job and saying that you're engaged in meaningful work. Exactly, JC. It's a, it's a, I get to have a happy life doing something that I love, and I'm incredibly fortunate to be able to do that. And even when I did work for a corporation, I enjoyed that job too. Uh, there were things about it that I didn't like. But I did have a lot of freedom in my job about my schedule and things like that unless I was in class. So yeah, I, I've been very lucky in my adult life to, to find and seek and strive for ways to live that are also fulfilling and, and make me happy. Which isn't to say that, you know, I've always been 100% happy with, with jobs and whatnot, but it's been a really good decade. Mm -hmm. I worked a lot of other jobs in my 20s and in my teens that were that I would call jobs. You know, just the job that you have to work, like many people do, just to punch the clock and, and make ends meet. I worked many, many of those jobs, and many of them were not fulfilling. And so, you know, later in life, you just kind of decide if you're going to spend your time on something, it has to be something that you love in some way. And that if it's not something that you in some way love, you need to be seeking something else that you do love. Yeah, that's the worst point, man. This is, I think a lot of people get stuck in situations like that where like you have a job you go to, it pays the bills, you're good at it, you do it, but it doesn't feel like meaningful work. And everyone's different when it comes to what a person perceives as meaningful work, everybody's, everybody's gonna be different. And it's possible to find meaning and to feel like any kind of work is good, I, I think. It's just about your mentality, your mindset, and just like who you are, everyone's a different person. There's a lot of people who would say, you know, sitting on World of Warcraft for eight hours a day, playing and talking to people about the game and having a good time is not meaningful work. But my brain clicks the box that says, yes, you love this, it's fun, it's great, this is meaningful work for you. But not everybody's brain is gonna check that same box, you know? JC, having so much time at home definitely makes ha the having the dogs easier and it makes you feel like you're giving the dogs a better life when you, do, when you do have a lot of time you can spend with them. It's great.
Convo asks, what kind of school did I study or what craft? I, I finished high school and I went to some community college. And ultimately, what I knew from a young age was that uh, the classroom really wasn't for me. And I often think about if we had online schooling back when I was a kid, the way that we do now, that would have been an environment that I could have excelled in. I always got good grades, but there was nothing about school that compelled me to continue in that avenue. Everything I wanted to learn, I would typically just learn from a book. And then later that learning became, you know, researching online to learn. And I just never really felt like I thrived in the classroom. So yeah, I graduated high school, I did some community college, and then I worked those jobs I was talking about. And some of them were better than others, but they, they all just, you know, they were grading jobs that you just did to, to make money. And I got into my 30s and got really lucky to find my career teaching classes and writing training materials. But yeah, I'm a person with basically no, the only education that I have that's meaningful education is just shit that I taught myself by reading books. Public school taught me how to memorize information very briefly and then, and then complete a test well, and then forget all of that information except the stuff that I found interesting. Is it just me or is, is hardcore becoming more and more popular and every day we're seeing more and more people in the zones? This is crazy. You know, maybe it's just that I've, I've never really quested in Red Ridge, so I've never seen quite how busy it is. But man, this place is absolutely rocking with people right now. It's kind of crazy how, how few spawns we're able to get. Uh, maybe we can sneak back here. This guy back here is level 23, which is a little bit, a little bit of a high level. It definitely gets busier as the, as the day goes on, it seems. Even this morning, though, it was pretty busy. It's just like, it seems like it's busy everywhere. It's really interesting. I wonder if there's ever a point, maybe in the future, when they need to have two hardcore realms. Does that ever happen, do you think? Or do you think it's just like, we just all play on the same server, and maybe we just get the respawn rate cranked up a little bit? I would be fine with the respawn rate cranking up. I, I've gotten used to the concept and the idea that anything could instantly respawn and you just have to either plan for it or be able to deal with it. So I, I wouldn't mind them really cranking up the respawn rate. The good thing you can do is like, if you know where the enemies are at, you, you pull them away from their spawn point. And then that way, as long as you don't stand on a different spawn point, when they do come back, they're not gonna drop on top of you. So you can kind of plan around it. If you if you approach every pull with the thought that this guy could instantly respawn, then you can be a little bit safer. See, like right here, we start moving. We got to keep moving because we already got incoming. We can maybe keep this guy since we didn't aggro the warlock. That could be okay. Our health is okay. Let's stun him here since the warlock stopped. Look at this. We got, we got, we got respawns above us. Let's move him. Now see what just happened there is I didn't know where the spawns were, and so that almost got us in trouble.
Yeah, I mean, so much of the stuff that they try to teach you through school is about just rote memorization of, of facts and names and dates and stuff. And for me, I didn't learn things that way that stuck. The only way that I could learn something is if I was interested in it and found a, a decently written book about it. I, I studied economics that way and some sociology, philosophy. It was just, I, I find a good book or a good author in that genre of books and I would just read. Not something I do enough anymore. These days I read fiction. But this was something, you know, I, I kind of acknowledged to myself that I was not a person who was going to learn a lot from a classroom when I was young, and I just kind of sought knowledge on my own. We need to go sell stuff. That's what we need to do. Yeah, I think hardcore and PvP, I just don't know if they mix. I, I, I kind of see the allure for some people, I just don't know. Well, staying alive is, is hard enough, is kind of how I see it. Staying alive is already super hard without really worrying about other players. If I had to worry about other players dropping in on me, I don't know. Point Madness asked if I have any fun hobbies outside of gaming. I don't think so, I'm not a very fun person. I, uh, I read, I've, I've been reading Sanderson, I've been reading the Cosmere books in my downtime. I shoot hoops out in the backyard. Yep, I like to shoot hoops. I don't know if that's fun. I work out, but I don't really think that's a hobby, that's just a routine at this point. Einstein once said that education is what remains after you forget much of what you learned in school. Yeah, I agree with that. Like, you inevitably forget a lot of what you learn in school regardless. Uh, what school does, and really the only thing it does, is for some people it gives you a grasp of some mental mathematics. Because they just pound math into you basically from like an early age on, and that's really what they focus on your learning. And so you become a, a human calculator to some extent. It could be like that's the only good thing that school can do to you. If you have a math brain, you become kind of a human calculator. <laughs> You become a human calculator in a day and age when you literally will never need to be a human calculator. Which I find kind of amusing. Same thing with having you memorize like stupid facts about dates. Like if you need to know a date that a historical figure was alive, died, did the heroic thing, you can just Google it. You don't have to remember it. No one should remember it. You don't have to. You can just look it up if you want to know it. So why are we learning stuff like that? Why don't we learn about things in the broader scope? Why don't we learn about like the social impacts and the societal change caused after World War II? Uh, that could be interesting to see how like society changed and actually learn something about people in history. But you know, in school, you don't really focus on stuff like that. It's like dates, names, battles, rivers that were crossed. None of it gives you a holistic view uh, of anything. So therefore, there can be real no real learning. We are running away from this one. Yep. Yeah, tinfoil fan. I sometimes, I sometimes do regret not not going to a real college. I feel like that learning experience could have been different, but the experiences I had were so consistent. And then when I, I did try to go to college, it was just to a community college to have to be doing something, you know. And then I found there that the, the classes were run the same exact way as I had seen in high school, and I had just absolutely no interest in paying somebody to be subjected to the same kind of learning. It just didn't make sense.
Confo, the problem is that a lot of people go through school, I think, and they learn basic facts and they learn these basic things, but a lot of them, a lot of people just forget all that stuff. And so, like, you can ask, even I don't know the answers to some basic historical questions, and I like history. But if you ask me, like, specific dates about things, I'm not going to remember. What year did the Civil War start? I have no idea. Um, you know, America's Declaration of Independence, 1776, right? But I could be wrong. I could easily be wrong, because at some point they burn these dates into me, but they don't stick. That kind of information sticks long enough to fill it out on a test, and long enough to fill it out on a midterm, and long enough to fill it out on a final. Uh, but that kind of knowledge, it's just like, it doesn't stick, you know? Whereas if you're learning something that you're really interested in, and if, if you, the way you're learning something tells a story in some way, that's the easiest way to learn facts is if you weave it into a story. So if you're reading like a good history book, or if you're reading a good economics book that provides like good real life examples in story form, then you're able to actually learn information and you have examples that you've been given to see how the information functions uh, in a real world. Yeah, stories are the best way to convey convey knowledge. Because a, a story will make the knowledge stick in someone's head, whereas like rote facts, highlighted words, and bolded definitions will never stick in your head. Travisine, I am enjoying streaming very, very much. Uh, a lot more than I thought I would. It's actually been really incredible. And uh, it's thanks to you guys. So thank you for being here. Ooh, we could keep going after these battle worn axes, but man, we are just not getting them. Let's go to the south and let's just fight some gnolls or something down to the south for a while. Eventually, we will get to a level or to a point where we can seriously work on some quests, but I feel like the next time that's going to happen is probably going to be when we're actually ready to go into Duskwood. Which at this point I'm thinking is going to be level 23. Empty bags! Ah, uh, empty bags. You're absolutely right. Empty the bags. We are, we are full, yeah. Yes, I do love the learning theory. Luca, sure, you learn dates to know what order stuff happened in, but when you forget all those dates, it doesn't matter. You're either going to remember the order or things are not. The numbers, the dates don't really help you know the order. What helps you know the order is a story being told to you. If you tell me a story of the major events of World War One and you wrap it around characters that really existed and, and you tell it to me that way, I'm going to remember the flow of events. I, I might not remember the dates and I don't know the time that the shot that was heard around the world was fired. I'm not going to remember that stuff, but if you tell me it in a story, I'll remember like the events and the order that they happened and I'll have a holistic view of World War One, as opposed to just knowing when it started. When this battle happened, when the river was crossed by this expeditionary force, uh, stuff like that, you know. That being said, everybody learns differently. That's like the biggest thing you learn when you go into education is that everybody learns differently. What can I get for you today? How many shields do we need? Six? Seven shields? Apparently a lot. Josh Kearney, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Thank you for being here. If I get sucked into learning theory, that's all that we'll talk about and I, and I won't play the game. <laughs> I, I won't play the game. If we, and also, if we start talking about history, you know, I, I, will, I'll probably, I probably won't play the game either. I'll get, I'll get, I'll get too sucked in. We're going to go fight some easier stuff so that if I do get distracted, it's not quite as dangerous as it has been fighting the orcs.
What is his quest? Blackrock Bounty. We probably should have had this at the same time as the axes. Fan for you ask if I've heard of Riot Games' upcoming MMO. Yeah, I'm definitely definitely aware of their upcoming MMO. Upcoming, you know, maybe the next five years, I would I would say. And I'm really excited about it. Uh, I'm not a League of Legends player. I've never played League of Legends. I've never installed League of Legends, and I probably never will. I did watch Arcane on Netflix, and it was freaking amazing. But I, I don't think, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong, we haven't seen or really heard any real details about the Riot MMO, right? There's no trailers or gameplay examples. They're really early in development still, aren't they? I, I don't think I've actually, like, yeah, I've heard of it. Like, they've announced it. Like, hey, we're working on an MMO for the future. But I don't think we've actually, like, seen any anything of it. But obviously, like, just, I'm super excited. If it's, if it's anything like the quality of Arcane as far as, like, the story being told and voice acting and stuff like that, then they're going to have an automatic winner as long as they don't botch it horribly in some gameplay design way. Confo, what kind of music do I listen to? Well, I mean... I'm, I'm from Michigan, and I grew up around Detroit, so the only music I listen to is Eminem, obviously. Are there other musical artists? I don't know. Yeah, I'm hoping in the next couple years we will we'll learn more about the Riot MMO. No, I don't say Motown. I don't know. Nobody really says Motown. Pe <laughs> nobody in Detroit says Motown. The Motor City, yeah, sometimes. But hardly ever Motown. Why did I stop playing Valheim? This is an easy one. I stopped playing Valheim because of the boat. Because of the boat. And anybody who watched that series up until that point, you'll realize why I stopped playing. Man, I built a boat to get to the boat, thinking that I could use the boats to move each other slowly and then use them as a platform to swim across that river. And yeah, it didn't work. And um, yeah, if they got rid of the boat or made the boat control the way the boat in Witcher 3 controls, that would be ideal. Nobody cares about ICP. Don't talk about them here again. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Why don't you just go drink your Fago Cola and enjoy that by yourself, okay, buddy? Am I enjoying Hardcore WoW more than the normal way to play? Absolutely. Hardcore World of Warcraft and Classic Era is currently my favorite way of enjoying the game. It's probably some of the most fun. I, it's the most fun solo play I've ever had in the game. So there's that. Yeah, Daryl, and I hate being frustrated in games because that's totally why I don't play games. I don't play games to be frustrated with the mechanics or with my inability to manipulate things. And so when I get to that point and I, I don't conquer it, I feel like it creates bad content. And I will, I will dump a playthrough rather than struggle through something and create a bunch of negative content. I tried a lot of stuff off recording to like just make it work and it, and it, and it wasn't going to for me. I watched some YouTube videos, I listened to some people in comments try to help me to pilot the boat, and nothing made my comprehension of what was happening any better. Yeah. <laughs> it, the boat controls just need to be simpler. I don't, I don't think there's any reason to try to 
realistically articulate what it is like to man a sailboat solo. I, I don't want to play a sailboat simulator. Josh, this is classic era, man. We kill all dragons, okay? We're gonna kill all the dragons. I know they're all cute and stuff now, but we're gonna kill them anyway. Yeah, Tactical Warrior, I, I've basically gotten to the point where like I have zero interest in endgame stuff because, yeah, it's not a journey. Endgame stuff is never... When they can make endgame content that still feels like you're on some kind of journey and it's solo play, then I'll be interested in endgame content in a game. I want to still feel like I'm on the journey. I don't want to be like, well, it's time to go stand in the city until I figure out what to do next or till my queue pops. I don't, I don't really want that. It, it's a very different thing. Joe Middleton asked, when do I think I can do a dungeon? I can do a dungeon when some of you guys get your characters up and you send me a tell and you say, hey, we're putting this group together, do you want to tank it? And then I will say yes. That's the honest answer. The honest answer is that if I'm going to do a five-man stuff, I would really rather do it with somebody in the stream, somebody who knows me, my proclivities, and they know what they're getting into with me as a tank. And I would feel better with that than going with five or four random people. Because that way, at least if I get you guys killed, you kind of knew what you were in for. <laughs> and that's how I'd want to do it. Uh, besides that, I have no real interest in risking the biscuit unless it means I can play with you guys. My weather just alerted me that it's 87 degrees outside right now. In 40 minutes, I have to pick my son up from school, and part of that is standing outside waiting for them to let the kids out of the doors in a mad rush. And I'm just like, I got sick to my stomach thinking about how hot it's going to be. Literally a wave of nausea struck me. Kobe, I would say right now, man, it's kind of a choice between what you want, because Classic has the journey, but I don't know how, how active the endgame stuff is. I think if, if you're not on the hardcore server, if you just want to play Classic Era, there are Classic Era servers, and that's probably where you'll be able to do endgame stuff. But, but retail is more about the endgame, so if you want to do PvP and you want to grind up the PvP gear and go through ranks and stuff like that, I, I think retail is probably just going to be a better experience for, for endgame play. Um, for any kind of instance end gameplay, I think, whether it's dungeons, raids, mythic five bands, PvP, if you're interested in, in instanced group content, and you think that's what you dig, then I think that retail is probably where you want to be right now. Whereas, if you just want to get on and have a great time in the world, and explore and quest, kind of like what we're doing here, then classic is where you want to be. I wish it was 77 degrees Fahrenheit. That's like my, my perfect summertime high temperature would be if it only ever got to about 77, 78 degrees. Guard, somebody told me that if I did the quest for the paladin weapon right now that it would probably get me killed so I'm kind of holding off a while I think there was like a, a multi-pull involved 
or maybe several waves we have to fight through and survive, and uh, I guess we might get killed right now if we try to do it. Oh, and Obi Guards, as far as how old I am, I'm 39 years old. I'll, I'll be 40 years old this January. It's not a secret. I'm an old person. If it helps, though, I, I live my life and I feel like a 12-year-old most of the time. My favorite things to do are, are to play video games, to shoot hoops in the yard with my son and the dogs out there, to go on walks. Like, I basically just live like a 12-year-old. Travisine, I, I'm still alive, man. It's not past tense yet. I'm still alive. I'm still alive and alive. So that's two good things. I, I have about 30 more minutes I can stream this afternoon. I do have a hard stop coming up at about 2.25. I do have to pick my son up from school today. I don't have to. I get to pick my son up from school today. So I'm doing that. And so, yeah, I have a hard stop. And then we'll, we'll be back this evening, presumably for Diablo 4, but... If that falls through, we'll just get back on here. And by falls through, I mean if the Diablo 4 servers completely implode like I have a feeling they might do. The Pally Mace quest requires visits to SFK and Deadmines. The quest with the multiple pools is in Westfall and only gives you sense on dead spell, which is pretty pointless. Yeah, it. Hmm. I don't need a sense on dead spell, that's true. This is a VOD saying that I'm still alive, yeah. How confusing is that? Josh Kearney wonders how hardcore would be in retail. I will share some of my experiences with leveling in retail. Leveling in retail, you will die lots. Uh, the reasons you will die, you will die lots, especially if you're not wearing heirloom gear or keeping your gear current. You'll die in retail a lot while you're leveling up because in retail you're playing through BFA content and the mobs and the level design are super packed together. So there's, there's piles of mobs everywhere. Three mobs here, four mobs here, six mobs here, two mobs here. And you are just fighting stuff and getting attacked all the time. And while you're leveling up, your character in retail does not feel super powerful. Especially if you're not equipped in heirlooms and especially if you're just not keeping your, your gear current. You will feel weak. We felt weak on the shaman, on, on the mage. And uh, we died lots in retail. I would, not, I would not want to try to do a hardcore retail playthrough through BFA and Dragonflight content because... The mob density is just, it's too much. I don't know if it would even be enjoyable in the first place, but I think that, I think that it might be more challenging in some ways. Because the areas are just designed to be full of enemies. It's designed for that, like, sometimes you will die, you know, and there are graveyards really close, so the game more than ever in retail is designed to allow for the fact that, like, sometimes you're going to overpull and get killed. Can I explain in two words the main idea about hardcore? Yeah. In two words, the main idea of hardcore is don't die. That's it. That's the whole point. Don't die. Oh, we hit level 22 at some point. Yeah. <laughs> that was a while ago, right? Have I spent that talent point? Oh yeah, we definitely did. We could go back down into Duskwood for a bit. 
That might be okay. We did okay fighting the orcs. I feel like we would do okay fighting some spiders and wolves. Yeah, I, I don't know, like, for hardcore and PvP, I, I do feel like most hardcore is, is basically PvP-free. I guess, yeah, you can PvP in the open world. And I'm assuming death works the same way, though. Like, if you PvP and you get killed, then you're, you're dead. I don't know if I would want to risk that against another player. Miles, thank you so much, man. That's super generous of you, thank you. Thanks for being here. Lucas, thank you, man. Thanks for being here. Good vibes to you. Shamworld, hello. Thanks for being here. Blood Moon, hi, how's it going? Am I finding it difficult to find an area to safely quest in? Yeah, I'm finding it, it difficult to find an area to quest in that is safe. We can find mobs and stuff to fight that are okay, but when it comes to like wholeheartedly tackling any of the quests we can do right now, I worry about all of them. Even doing this one, I just don't, it's not, it's not green and I don't really feel safe with that. But it is what we have to work with right now, so I'm trying to go slow. You know, we've been doing a lot of grinding, and I feel like that's been okay. I, I am kind of looking forward to when we get to a point where we can dive into a bunch of questing safely, but I just don't know if that is going to happen anytime soon. To be fair, I mean, a dead mines run would, would give us some XP and get us some quests done, but yeah, I just don't feel comfortable enough to do it with a pug.
Steve, that's a really good point. A level or two in Classic WoW definitely makes a difference. As it does in a lot of RPGs, just hitting that level and becoming just a little bit more powerful can be a big difference. And it's one of the reasons why I, I think I'll always love Classic more than Retail, is I really don't like level scaling. In my RPGs, the idea of an RPG it's for me is that you can tackle things at level and make a big challenge for yourself, but you always have the option of grinding out a level or two and becoming more powerful and making that boss fight or whatever it is easier. And to me, that's kind of like at the heart of an RPG, is the ability to, to power up your character and tackle challenges that you want to when you're ready. Am I finding the Paladin easier than other classes at Hardcore? What I'm finding is that the Paladin has a lot of survivability. And the Paladin's ability to run away from a fight and live through it might be unparalleled. Just because we can, we can use Lay on Hands and then in that same encounter we could use Divine Protection and we have potions, it's like there's a lot of things that make us super able to run away. Lucas, thank you, man. I'm having a great day. I hope you're doing well, too. I've been, have, I've been having great days. I'm having a lot of fun getting out here with you guys. It's been really amazing. It's been amazing, and it's been kind of reinvigorating. At a time when, when I feel I needed that. I think a lot of the like internal emotional impetus for me to stream was I, I kind of started to feel like I'm just like, existing in a vacuum. A lot of it's because you know I, I don't commute to a job. I, I don't have to, I don't have to leave my house except to do the things that I want to do or the things that need to be taken care of. So I did kind of start to feel like just existing in this vacuum and trying to interact with you guys in YouTube comments is never enough and not the same. And so that was kind of the emotional impetus was actual loneliness. <laughs> It turns out was the kind of the emotional impetus to make me think like, yeah, we have to start doing streams. I didn't realize it was going to be this fast. When I got on yesterday to do my testing, my thought was that we would start our official Fresh Start Hardcore server as a stream. But then here we are, because I've just been having a great time. And I'm really grateful to have all you guys here. Yes, exactly, and that's what makes Retail WoW so hard, is that it has level scaling, and so you never feel like you're getting more powerful. If anything, it often feels like the enemies are getting slightly more powerful than you every time you level, especially if you're leveling and you're not equipping new gear. You're getting a little bit more powerful, but the enemies seem to be getting more powerful with level scaling, and it's just, it's not a fun way to experience an RPG. Yeah, Blood Moon, I think one of the most important things for a hardcore character is the, its ability to escape and then knowing how you're going to use your abilities to escape when you need to. And some classes have really good get-out-of-jail-free cards, and some don't. And they all usually have something, like rogues get vanished, I think, around 20. The priest was always super survivable, especially if you, if you go a little bit into the discipline tree, you can get improved power word shield. And basically, as a priest, if you need to run away from anything, you're gonna be able to run away. Uh, that's why our priest died in the elevator, and like, our priest probably would not have died. I, I got pretty confident with our ability to power word shield and run away. 
that I didn't really think anything could kill us short of a major catastrophe. But not all classes are created equal. Adrian, take care, man. Have a good night. Thanks for being here. Josh, being homesick and being actually sick is like the worst, man. Especially if you're spending a sick time home alone. I'm always like 100% more emotional when I'm sick or physically, some kind of physical ailment. It, it gets harder to, to maintain stoicism uh, when you're just sick and you're, you feel like crap, especially when no one's around. The priest was great. The priest was so survivable. I was looking forward to going deeper into the shadow tree with that one. We'll do a priest again someday. I don't know if it's what we'll do for our first character in hardcore, but it, it could be because we would have a pretty good chance of surviving. If we, if we made a priest for the first official hardcore character, I'm pretty confident we could do it. Miles says that rumor has that the Undercity lift will have its own rate. Okay, I see. I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah, can 25 people survive the elevator at once? That's the true test. How many people we can can we cram onto the elevator and how many of them will get killed? Josh, it's a good time to get into hardcore, man. If, you, if you're feeling the itch at all, go ahead and jump in on Blood Cell Buccaneers. We, we could potentially have two or three months before we see the Blizzard official servers, so... Now is the time. It's so great right now, I just, I just feel like we're in a golden age of Classic Era. And I just want to soak up all the goodness while we can. And guys, this is fair warning that I do have that hard stop in about 10 minutes. I have a hard stop, so I have to start thinking about getting us somewhere safe. You know, I don't have to think about that because we can just hard at the last moment. But yeah, my hard stop is coming up at 2.25. I think I need to hearth out and skedaddle.
Gina, you're totally right. This Blood Cell Buccaneers is an official server. I get into the terminology of saying like, oh, official Blizz Hardcore. What I mean, I guess, is like, yes, Blood 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 Cell Buccaneers is an official server, but it doesn't have baked in hardcore rules. So yeah, I, I keep saying official Blizzard. Blood Cell Buccaneers is an official Blizzard server too. <laughs> it just doesn't have the hardcore rules baked into it like we suspect the the official hardcore server will. JSZZ, I don't, I don't know anything about the the official hardcore servers. I don't know anything more than the fact that Blizzard said that they're going to exist this summer. So we don't have any more information that I'm aware of, unless a Wowhead article went up today that I missed. Just that the, the servers are going to come out sometime in the summer of 2023. So summer starts around June 20th and goes till September 20th. So. We will be getting some form of a server with hardcore rules baked into it sometime in that time frame, and that's all we know. They haven't told us anything else yet, and we're probably not going to get any other real news until the Diablo 4 hype dies down, because they're, they're going to ride one hype train at a time. It's, it's not beneficial for, some, for a company to like try to get two hype trains going at once, so probably next week we'll hear something about hardcore. Tin vein. I feel like I haven't been doing a lot of mining. Have I been missing a lot of mining nodes? I would believe it. Josh, take care of yourself, man. Get better. We'll see you next time. Thanks for being here. Oh, the inventory is full, and it turns out when your inventory is full, you can sit, you can mine that node all day, and nothing's gonna happen. Let's go turn this quest in. I think we'll go turn this quest in, and then I think I'm gonna have to hearth out of here and get us parked somewhere safe. Chris M, do I remember the video where I got to the mine eight times just to notice my full inventory? I mean, that could describe any Robert Rambles video. Getting to the place multiple times and realizing that for the multiple times we've had a full inventory. That's a pretty uh, accurate description of any of my content. Uh, but you know, hey, at least I haven't had somebody trade me bags. So there's that.
that's kind of like saying, do you remember that one time when you just didn't buff yourself at all? That could that could be any that could be any video. Alright guys, this is gonna be it. I'm gonna turn this in, I'm gonna hearth us back to the inn, I'm gonna fight this wolf, and we're gonna wrap up the stream here. It's been a lot of fun, and I really appreciate you guys being here. We're not gonna die to these wolves in the last couple minutes of the stream either, so... That's, uh, that's not what's gonna happen. It's not what's gonna happen, and I'm gonna make sure of that by just popping a bubble and running away. Because that is what we're gonna do. Hello, safe travels. Hey there, have a good one. The new thing with Mitch is that he faked his character's death. He faked his character's death or he faked not dying. Wait, why would he fake his character's death? I feel like the way he would go would be to like, fake not dying. <laughs> Faking your character's death, it's easy enough just to get your character actually killed. Auto run into the lava, so he like suicided out type of deal? Oh geez, we have, we have company. We're gonna have to lay on hands here I think. Let's do it, let's lay on hands. He auto ran into lava, he deserves it. <laughs> you deserve what you get when you auto run into lava. Blood Moon, I would definitely say I would definitely say go for collection professions and sell it for money. I, we have blacksmithing. A part of me regrets having blacksmithing. Part of me kind of wishes we'd have gone her herbalism alchemy for potions, but then another part of me wishes we had just kind of gone either either mining and leatherworking or leatherworking and herbalism just so we can sell stuff. And one of it is like part of it is inventory issues, like having to having to hold on to stuff, having to put stuff in the bank for professions later. I feel like it'd be a lot more efficient if we were just either using potions to to use, making potions to use, or just selling all the mats we're collecting for gold uh, would make things a lot simpler. Re seventy one, thank you for being here. Thank you for hanging out. Uh, we're gonna be doing a lot more streams from now on, so. Good day to you. See you around. And yeah, we're going to turn this in. We have a full inventory, and I'm going to wrap up here, guys. Yeah, I am something. at my hard deadline. So yeah, it's been a great time. Thank you guys for being here for it. I really do appreciate it. If you are interested in checking out some Diablo 4, we're going to be going later tonight, when whenever it opens up, which should be 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I'm at. Uh, we're going to do a druid, a caster druid. We're going to check out a druid, see how we feel. So yeah, look forward to seeing you guys there if you're interested. Besides that, we will be back tomorrow morning uh, around 9.45, same time as today. I will put the schedule up on the channel, so if you want to ring the bell for notifications uh, to be there, I would appreciate that. And I just appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for being here. Take care of yourselves out there and take care of each other. And we will see you back here.